Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. My name's Kevin, etc. etc. Uh, let's talk about uh, Command Colors Tricorn from Richard Borg, who is the designer, and it's a Compass Games title. Block game, card driven. You've probably seen Command Colors Napoleonics, you've probably seen Samurai, you've probably seen the Battle Cry stuff, and you've definitely seen all the ancient stuff. And it never ceases to amaze me how many variations on a base system that Borg is able to kind of pull together, whether it's with minis like in the World War I uh, solution uh, offering he has, or if it's, you know, like Memoir or for, Memoir 44 or whatever the case may be, right? He manages to pull using the same base mechanics and components, pull together something that's just different enough to make you stop and think about how to play the game. And you can't just go and do what you would do with Napoleonics or do what you would do with uh, Ancients or do what you would do in any of the other systems, right? And uh, I, the thing that struck me last night playing was that the, you know, everything else is generically the same, right? The, the components, the rule book, the scenario books, the way the scenarios are laid out and all the rest of it. But the details come down into the, uh, how do we handle the uh, different and discrete capabilities of the you know, wide variety of units well, I had an interruption and I and I've totally forgot where I was up to, so we're going to have to wing it. I think what I was talking about was how with the game system taking all of the different unit types and giving them some sort of unique attributes that make each particular Uh, each particular series or system in this, each particular series in the system, unique or somewhat unique, and so uh, Tricorn's no exception to that. It uh, takes on a pretty interesting disparate <laughs> capabilities of forces. You've got militia who were you know basically farmers and uh, townsfolk and whatnot who've been living a rough, tough existence and living in the wilderness and, and you know, and having a hunt and all that sort of stuff for, for, and, and live life, right, uh, as settlers for a period of time. So tough but not uh, well-trained in terms of army doctrine and things like that. And then you've got the, obviously got some regular forces, some regular rifle uh, forces and stuff like that for them, for the uh, Continental Army. And then you've got for the um, Imperial or Commonwealth Army, you've got the you know, grenadiers and riflemen and all that sort of stuff with their much better training and morale and things like that. And so bringing all that together in a really concise, clean way, allowing, you know, the number of flags that are allowed to be ignored uh, to be different for different force types and different uh, unit capabilities, allowing uh, the... Uh, you know, ranges and the number of dice to be thrown based on type and number of losses you've taken uh, per per unit, per four block unit, is really very, very cool. And we had a lot of fun with it. And we actually, you know, played the Battle of Bunker Hill, which uh, was interesting in of itself. And it was a pretty clear British victory. Uh, although the you know, the Americans, the Americans, the Continental Army uh, gave the British a bit of a run for their money when it came to ranged combat. But when things got in close, and that's where you start looking at the differences in the order cards and things like that, and some of the battle cards they give you, start to bring out more of that narrative flavor and, and the, the tactical uh, finesse and morale capabilities of different unit types. You know, militia can retreat and reform well. Uh, they they want they don't want to stand and fight against the British. They want to retreat and reform, and they have the British come at them again, and they can shoot them as they're approaching, or as the case may be. And the British have a number of cards that allow them to 
zip across the field at the quick at, at the double or a quick pace march or whatever the case may be or bayonet charge or whatever it may be and there are a number of those types of cards that they can use to uh, more rapidly engage with this uh, difficult to pin down enemy and the game did a really nice job of pulling pulling all that together now i think it the game still has the same issues that i found with napoleonics and ancients in that there are these battles and that could be an extremely large battle or a skirmish and each each unit is still four blocks and there's this fungible con concept of time and and unit scale doesn't really tightly um, define itself in the system necessarily right it's just kind of well here's the battlefield and here's the hills and here are the units and you may have named leaders and things like that but basically that's, that's kind of how it works so there's that you gotta sort of let that abstraction be as it may the battle played out pretty probably pretty much how I, I, I would have expected I got lucky on a couple of die rolls where uh, a leader leader was vanquished so we picked up a a win for that a kill for that a flag for that and then we forced a couple of retreats on the the british left flank uh, they retreated right off the board and morale broke uh, so it was bad bad die rolling on behalf of the brits um, but then of course this quick march and uh, bayonet charge allows the the british to engage very quickly and very closely and by the time you get around to battling back after they're done, you, you've got one block left or whatever the case may be, and you ain't doing a whole lot of damage there. Um, game came down to the down to down to the wire. I had five flags. My opponent had four flags, and then grabbed one of the hexes on Breed Hill that made it five uh, five flags, and then just managed to uh, knock out uh, a unit in that next turn, killed off a militia unit. So very tense game, a lot of fun, played fast, super easy to learn. You're, you're picking up uh, exactly who, who has how many dice uh, to throw uh, for combat and who, uh, when to pick a card, when not to pick a card, and when to play various cards. And we were coached along really well by our friend Brady, who helped us out there. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, a, a good little system and... Um, Probably looking forward to seeing some expansions and see what what more they can do with that uh, with that particular era in mind. So thought I'd check in with you on that. I'll probably do a quick little write up on the blog and post the rest of the pictures and give you a little battle uh, rundown on, on kind of what what transpired. But uh, thought I'd share that with you now. Take care.